These are the new Moondrop headphones. So in case you don't already know, Moondrop is a very, very popular brand in the audiophile slash audio enthusiast space. In case you're not living under a rock, Moondrop did release a new headphone. In fact, they're releasing new headphones. Plural. Initially, they released the new Moondrop Void, and now they have the new Moondrop Venus, both of which have kind of made small little waves in the community, but not too much as of yet, which is kind of surprising considering the amount of reputation that Moondrop has. But now, you know, after clearing out all of my work backlog, I shall now finally talk about their new headphones. So let's just answer the burning question. Are they actually good? Sponsored by Linsoul.com. Linsoul.com is your premier online retailer for all your chai fi needs. Sometimes when you surf the wild and wacky waters of the internet and you're trying to buy some of your chai fi goods, you just don't know which ones are reliable. After all, the online world is rife with all sorts of weird scammers, as well as fake stores that just simply don't send you whatever you just bought. Enter stage left Linsoul.com, one of the most reputable online stores in the audio enthusiast space. Buy a huge range of DAGs, amps, I amps, headphones, everything can think about when it comes to the audio space and we have a perfect peace of mind knowing that you just didn't get scammed. Linsoul is one of my longest standing sponsors and they themselves don't even carry Moondrop which is why I'm allowing them to be a sponsor for this video. If you need any further disclaimers just refer to this video where I talk about them for about 12 minutes but other than that go to linsoul.com support the people who support me. Alright back to the video. Okay so the elephant out of the room first the Moondrop Void. So in case you don't already know, I've already kind of reviewed the Moondrop Void, but this was an early unit. And after that, they decided to, you know, just completely revamp the entire the production process. So if you don't want to watch the video that is already up on my channel, the TLDW is simply, the Void feels cheap. The plastic felt cheap. It was clacky, like the components literally clacked against each other and just in general just felt like a very very cheap product which is not really the thing that you want when your product costs 200 US dollars. So after I dropped my review, Moondrop then stopped all production, went back to the drawing board to create this. The, the new the new void, I guess. So the main differences is that the plastic now has gone from a much more matte finish to something that's kind of glossy. The density of the plastic doesn't seem to have changed. It's still relatively lightweight, which is kind of a good thing, but at the same time, still feels kind of cheap, if I'm being honest. The other interesting thing that they did was they actually added on like dampeners, those stoppers, I guess you want to call it that, to the inner part of the hinges. So now it doesn't I mean, it, it, it still kind of makes noise, but it's not like the high-pitched clack that you would from the old Void. But apart from that, nothing much really has changed. The Void is still very much a Void. It sounds like the old Void. Sure, there is some mild improvements from the build quality standpoint, but not, not, not a lot that I would consider like a complete overhaul. It's not like the difference between, let's say, a HD 600 versus a HD 660S, for example. The Moondrop Void, in terms of sound quality, still sounds a bit more or less the same. I would consider it like a warm neutral. There's a bit of a warm tilt to it, so it's not that um, bright and or piercing. So it's a nice comfortable listen, but at the same time, for some reason, it just gives me vibe of a sense of cheapness, if you will, if it makes sense. So yeah, in terms of the new Void, my old review is still largely relevant uh, in almost all things except for the build quality. And if, even then, you could argue, make the argument that it's still kind of the same. Mild improvements, still improved, by the way, so I'll give Moondrop credit for that. Um, but I still probably wouldn't recommend people to it on a purely like, oh, this feels premium. It, it, it doesn't. It doesn't. All right, elephant out of the room. Let's now talk about the headphone that everyone is talking about now, the Venus. So Moondrop themselves are going to be releasing three new headphones for their first uh, batch. First of all is the Dynamic Driver Void. After that would be the Planar Venus. And then right after that would be the Electrostatic Moon Zero. The Venus now costing a cool $600 is their second in the lineup. And in general, for a just quick snippet that you can just clip off, it sounds good. It's a good, arguably excellent headphone. 
in a bracket that is not necessarily touched by a lot of headphones. So what exactly does a Venus sound like? Well, it sounds neutral. It sounds maybe slightly bright tilted, but it's a planar that sounds closer to something like, let's say, a Hi-Fi Man as opposed to an Odyssey. So um, naturally, I would prefer something like that. Beyond all the sound things, one thing that really stood out to me was that going from the Void to the Venus is just the sheer difference in build quality. You have the Void, which kind of feels cheap-ish and maybe something that you get like $50. And then you have this chunk of a thing. Jesus Christ, it is solid fucking metal. I don't know how Moondrop went from something like, uh, like that to something like this. It is almost inconceivable. I don't know how they do it. But I guess uh, the price difference of $400 might have something to do with it. I don't know. Okay, let's not talk too much about build quality. Yes, it's a chunk. It is very heavy. It Honestly, it is too heavy. Yeah, this is kind of edging into Odyssey breaking your neck territory. The sound itself is clean. Nothing really gets emphasized too much apart from maybe the higher frequencies. Everything is properly articulated, enunciated, very well separated, all those snake all terms, I guess you want to call it that. But beyond the things that I can just describe to you that you could easily see from the graph, the measurements, the most important thing is how competitive is it within the headphone market, which is an interesting conversation to have because it currently exists in a price bracket that again, as, as I mentioned, not a lot of brands really get into. The realm of $500 to $1,000 is not very well populated if, if, if I'm being honest. So let's just talk about the Venus's immediate competition, which would be the Hi-Fi Man Edition XS, as well as the Focal Elex. I am completely ignoring the HD 660S because they are the absolute garbage. Now at this point, I would actually consider the Hi-Fi Man Edition XS to be the benchmark of the $500 range. If you cannot compete with it, you might as well not compete at all. And the Venus is, from a tonal balance perspective, I'd say a little bit too bright compared to the Edition XS. But then again, the Venus does come off as a lot cleaner sounding, if, if that makes sense. I can not necessarily hear more of the details, but the details are presented more clearly or more upfront, if you want to call it that. And then we have the Focal Elex, which is basically the mini clear, which a lot of people would suggest if you're going around the $500 price bracket. The Elex also costs $600, so it's basically at the exact same price bracket as the Venus, but I feel like they are both kind of targeting different demographics. First of all, the Elex is a dynamic driver headphone, so you have all of the benefits that dynamic driver headphones tend to have, for example, um, having more accurate timbre, if you believe in that, which I kind of do agree, like the Venus has a bit of that, you know, over sharpened etched edge to it, if you want to call it that, and not something that I'll prefer over, let's say, my own HD 600 in terms of pure timbre quality. So even when we talk about the Venus in the context of the Edition XS and the Elex, we also have to understand that it is kind of one of the only options or very few options that you can have in this price bracket. The Venus is neither overachieving nor is it under expectations, if you can kind of make sense of that. It is perfectly placed as it should be. I wouldn't recommend the Venus over something like the Edition XS, nor would I recommend something over the Elex, for example. I would absolutely recommend it over this, again, the 660S because again, it is hot garbage. But in terms of the $500, $600 price bracket, I feel like the Venus does have the potential to become one of a mainstay recommendation. Like, there is genuinely not a lot of products in this range. And yes, you do get your money's worth when it comes to the absolute uh, build quality of the thing. It is certainly better built than any Hi-Fi Man I've come across and potentially better built than an Odyssey, I think. I don't want to make that claim. I'm not I'm not a build quality guy, you know, again, just take my word for it when it comes to sound quality. So in terms of the final rankings, in the context of the headphone ranking list that I have on my website, critical.com, the Moondrop Void still has the same ranking. I don't think it changes too much from its revision. The Moondrop Venus, however, I have not really thought about it too much. I'm just like filming this out on the spur of the moment, but you know, I'll put up the ranks here. It's like right here, right here, somewhere, somewhere here. All right, I'll think about it later, okay? But yeah, I would say Moondrop now has a decent start 
to the headphone market. I wouldn't say that they are like, oh, you know, they're, they're breaking the headphone market now. Not really, you know, they still have quite a bit to do. But what on the street is that they are going to be taking on very similar strategies to what they have done with, you know, the KXXS, the Aria, Starfield, so and so forth. So we'll see. And beyond all that, let me just thank my big money boys. Here are all of your beautiful names if you have subscribed to the $20 tier on my Patreon. And for those who have subscribed to the $30 tier, allow me to speak out your beautiful names. McMadface, Dennis, Laughing Psychonaut, HK57, TJ Daily, Saswata, Krenagel, Arisha, Alicia Burrito, Alex Frit, Andrew, Kevin, Pitt Vanderwitt, Posse Chronic, and Amber. I thank you all. You know, honestly, I have no idea when this video is going to be uploaded. It could be like anywhere from Christmas time all the way up to like after the New Year. So regardless, I guess it's like happy holidays, I guess. See you next week, month, year, year. And don't die. Fuck off. <laughs>